Welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to see the design of IAR filter from analog filter. In the previous video, we discussed how to design the analog Butterworth filter and analog Chepiche filter and related with that, the two two problem solved. Okay, so now we are going to see how to design the digital IAR filter from analog filter. Okay. And uh, so already you know there is a direct, uh, there is no direct method in order to design the digital filter. Okay, so in order to design the digital IR filter, first we have to design analog filter, then we have to convert uh, uh, the analog into digital. Okay, so there are uh, different transformation techniques are there. So the transformation techniques are the first one approximation of uh, derivative impulse invariant transformation, bilinear transformation, matched is a transform technique. So these are all the uh, uh, used, okay, widely used method in order to digitize uh, the analog filter into digital filter. Okay, so this is also yeah, one of the two mark question. What are all the uh, methods used to design the digital IAR filter means this is the answer. Okay, approximation of derivative, impulse invariant transformation, bilinear transformation, matched is a transform technique. Okay, and uh, in that technique, uh, so if the conversion uh, technique is to be effective, it possesses these two properties. Okay, so all this four method, it possesses these two properties. So what does that property means? Uh, the J omega axis in the S plane should be mapped into the unit circle in the Z plane. Okay, so here we are going to convert the analog filter into digital filter. That is the analog transfer function H of S. Okay, we have to convert into the digital transfer function capital H of Z. Okay, H of S is nothing but uh, the Laplace transformation of uh, their impulse response. Uh, H of Z is nothing but the Z transform of uh, uh, that a transfer function, okay, and uh, is a transform of the impulse response of discrete time system. So, in order to convert the analog filter into digital filter, so the J omega axis in the S plane should be mapped into the unit circle in the Z plane, okay. So, if uh, that uh, thing is mapped means uh, there is a that is a and other by and uh, as well as the left half plane of the S plane should be mapped into the unit circle, okay, inside the unit circle. Right half of the poles are uh, located in the outside of the unit circle, okay. So if you are mapping like that means at the time only we can get uh, the stable digital filter, we can design from the stable analog filter, okay. So the two things, one is the J omega axis in the S plane should be mapped into the unit circle in the Z plane and the left half plane of S plane should be mapped into the inside of the unit circle. Then only we can design the stable digital filter from the stable analog filter. Okay, so all these four methods, it should satisfy these two property means that methods are the effective way of uh, uh, designing the digital IAR filter from analog filter. Okay. And um, so we will see one by one. So the first method, okay. So in this uh, video, we are going to discuss about uh, the impulse invariant method and the related problem we are going to solve. In next, next videos, we will see the other methods, okay. So you see uh, steps to design the digital filter using impulse invariant method. Okay, so what are all these steps uh, we have to follow in order to design digital filter from using impulse invariant method we are going to see and uh, related with that we are going to solve one problem okay so the first uh, step is to from the given specification we how to uh, find the transfer function of analog filter first okay so using uh, butterworth approximation or chepichev approximation we how to find h of s h of s is nothing but the transfer function of analog filter it's a first step so this first step, we have to follow the previous thing. Okay, already in the previous video, we uh, derived uh, for the given from the given specification how to uh, design analog Butterworth or analog Chepichev. Already uh, we designed, you know, using that step, we have to uh, find the 
HEA of S. Okay, that is analog transfer function of analog filter. That is the first step. Okay. Then the second one, we have to select the sampling rate of the digital filter T. Okay. So T capital T value, it will be given in a problem. Or otherwise, you have to take a T as a one a seconds per sample. We have to consider. Okay. Then the third step, uh, we have to express the analog filter transfer function as the sum of single pole filter. So in step number one, uh, we are having the HA of S, okay, the analog transfer function, you know, that analog transfer function, we have to express as a sum of single pole filter. You see, in this format, we have to expand. That is the HA of S can be expanded as summation k equal to one to n ck by s minus pk. That means if you are expanding, uh, we can get c1 by s minus p1 plus c2 divided by s minus p2. Okay, so like that we have to split. Okay, so our analog transfer function, we have to split as a addition, sum of single pole transfer function, uh, some constant by s minus p1, some constant by s minus p2 and so on. In this format, we have to split. So in order to convert our transfer function in this format, we have to use the partial fraction method. Already we studied in max and signal system, you know, using that we have to split, okay. So after that, after converting into this format, we have to find out the value of C case and P case. C case uh, uh, that uh, constant, okay, C1, C2, C3 value. P1, P2 is a poles, okay. So you just find that C1, C2, C3 value, P1, P2, P3 value. So after that, uh, we have to compute the Z transform of the digital filter using the formula. So what is the uh, transfer function of uh, that a digital filter means the H of Z is equal to summation K equal to one to N C K by one minus E power P K T into Z inverse. Okay, so in this equation, you just substitute N value C1, C2, C3, that is CK value, P1, P2, P3 value means we can get the digital filter, okay. Uh, so in this, we have to substitute C1, C2, C3, P1, P2, P3, you just substitute according to the N value, N is the order of the filter, okay. So you just substitute and if you are adding and taking LCM means we can get the transfer function of digital filter, okay, that's all. And if uh, uh, the sampling rate is very high, that is the T value, uh, instead of one, the T value is very high, means the H of Z is equal to uh, summation K equal to one to N T into the total formula, CK by one minus E power PK T into Z inverse. Okay, the same formula, you just multiply the T. Okay, so these are all the uh, design procedure in order to design the digital filter using impulse invariant method. Okay, so what's the first step? From the given specification, we have to uh, find the transfer function of analog filter first. Okay, so using Butterworth approximation or Chepichev approximation. So the method is mentioning in the problem. So you may use that particular method. Okay, and the second one, we have to choose the sampling rate, capital T value. Then the third one is uh, we have to expand the analog transfer function H of S as a addition of the single pole uh, transfer function constant by s minus p1 constant by s minus p2 and so on okay then we have to compute the z transform of the digital filter using the formula h of z is equal to summation k equal to 1 to n c k by 1 minus e power p k t into z inverse okay so that's also you just substitute the c1 c2 c3 value p1 p2 p3 value and if you are adding means that is the transfer function of digital filter. Okay, so this is the simple step in order to design impulse invariant method. Okay, and uh, using this, we are going to see one important problem. So this is an university question. You see the question for the analog transfer function, H of S equal to two by S plus one, S plus two, determine the H of Z using impulse invariant method. Assume T equal to one second. Okay, so in this uh, uh, directly, the analog transfer function is directly given. Okay, so no need to uh, use the Butterworth approximation, Chepichev approximation. So the analog transfer function is directly given. 
we how to uh, convert this analog transfer function into digital transfer function using impulse invariant method that's all okay so what are the given data h of is given and sampling time t equal to 1 second is given okay so we have to follow the procedure so what is the that is the first step already uh, given in our problem okay h a of s is given in our problem capital t value is also given so first is two two step is given in problem so third step fourth step only we are going to do what is the third step we have to express the analog transfer function as a sum of single pole filter okay so in this format we are going to convert okay so in order to express this h of s equal to 2 by s plus 1 into s plus 2 uh, in order to split up in this format we have to use the partial fraction method okay so already you know the procedure so in partial fraction method the above h of s it can be splitted as Uh, the constant a by s plus one plus b divided by s plus two. So you just take it as a equation number one, and in this we have to find out the value of a and b. Okay, so where a and b is calculated by, so a is nothing but so you see the a is calculated by the value under a. What is the value under a? S plus one multiplied with this total left side function h of s. Okay, at the condition s plus 1 means what is the value of s s equal to minus 1 okay so at the condition of s equal to minus 1 this is the procedure you find the value of a so s plus 1 into what is h of s 2 by s plus 1 into s plus 2 so here s plus 1 s plus 1 cancel then in the place of s instead of this s we have to substitute minus 1 So minus one plus two one. So two by one two. So a answer is two. Okay. Similarly, b is calculated by uh, what is the value under b? S plus two. So s plus two multiplied with this total h of s at the condition of uh, in s plus two means what is the s value minus two at the condition of s equal to minus two. Okay. So in that s plus two s plus two gets cancelled. So in the place of uh, uh, this, in the place of yes, you just substitute minus two. So here minus two plus one minus one. So two by minus one minus two. So a value, b value, we calculated. Okay. So once you calculated the value of a and b, we have to substitute this a and b in where this a and b value we have to substitute in equation number one. Okay. That is the h of s in. Uh, h of s can be expressed as a addition of single pole transfer function. You know, you just substitute here. So if you are substituting, uh, we can get uh, the h of s equal to. So you see, the h of s uh, equal to. So a is two. Okay, so two divided by s plus two. B is minus two. Minus two divided by two uh, divided by s plus one. Minus two divided by s plus two. Okay, so the third step over. And after that, uh, uh, here you see. So using impulse invariant method, so we expanded the H A of S in this format. Okay, so that is two uh, divided by S plus one and minus two divided by S plus two. Okay, so we converted our transfer function as an addition of this thing, and in this thing. What is this two? This two is nothing but c one. Okay, so the value of the first coefficient c k c one. Okay, here you see summation k equal to one to n. Here order of the filter is what is the order of the filter two. So k equal to one to two. So if you are expanding c one by s minus p one plus c two by s minus p two. So this is c one. So c one is two. P one. What is the first pole? The first pole is this s plus one means yes minus of minus one so that minus one is a pole p one similarly this minus two okay the minus two is a c two and uh, s plus two means what is the second pole p two equal to minus two okay p two equal to minus two so we calculated the c one c two and p one p two value okay so in that uh, so in impulse invariant method so the h of z Okay, so the analog transfer function can be converted into the digital transfer function using the formula h of z is equal to summation k equal to one to n c k by one minus e power p k t z inverse. 
okay so here n is 2 so if you are expanding this formula uh, c1 by 1 minus e power p1 t is at inverse plus c2 by that so what is the value of c1 2 so 2 by 1 minus e power what is p1 p1 is minus 1 so minus t into z inverse then what is c2 minus 2 divided by 1 minus e power minus 2t into z inverse okay so now you substitute the value of t what is the t in our problem t is given as 1 second so t value is substitute so 2 by 1 minus e power minus 1 z inverse minus 2 by 1 minus e power minus 2 z inverse okay then in calci you just find the value of e power minus 1 and e power minus 2 So the answer is uh, two by one minus zero point three six seven eight is at inverse minus two by one minus zero point one three five three is at inverse. Okay, then you take LCM for this thing and uh, re rearrange. So we can get uh, the digital filter transfer function as zero point four six five is at inverse by one minus zero point five zero three is at inverse plus 0.04976 is at power minus 2 okay so we converted the second order analog filter into digital filter using this impulse invariant method okay so simply the step first we how to split our transfer function analog transfer function into the addition of the single order transfer function so after that You just find c1 value. C1 is the the constant available in the first thing. It is c1. This is a c2. Then the first pole p1, second pole p2. Okay, you just calculate. After that, yeah, this is the general formula for the uh, digital filter in impulse invariant method. In that, you just substitute c1 value, c2 value, p1, p2 value, and after that, if you are taking LCM, we can get the answer. Okay, so this is the a uh, problem related with the impulse invariant method okay so thanks for watching my channel and please subscribe my channel for more videos in the next uh, thing in the next video we are going to uh, discuss about uh, the that is uh, from starting butterworth filter itself how to design uh, the NL, uh, digital filter okay digital filter using impulse invariant method okay so the next problem we will see in the next video uh, So, if you want to learn all lecture videos related with this subject, digital signal processing or discrete time signal processing, in my channel, in the name of her, uh, discrete time signal processing, one playlist is there. In that playlist, all lecture videos are available in order from unit one. Okay, so I will give link for that playlist in the description box. You can refer it. Okay, so thank you. We will meet in the next video.